Russia's war of aggression in Ukraine has caused immeasurable suffering and fundamentally changed the world overnight. Chancellor Scholz was right to speak of a watershed moment. The war is shaking up many things we thought were certain in security policy but also in energy policy. For it starkly shows us that dependence on the use of fossil fuels is dangerous, not only in the long term but also at this very moment. But one crisis, unfortunately, does not chase away all the other crises. On the contrary, crises reinforce one another. The COVID-19 pandemic is not yet over. And as the new report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change shows, climate change is also increasing. Greenhouse gas emissions are rising again. And at present, nearly half of mankind is acutely threatened by this the climate crisis, and the window of opportunity for mankind to act is closing soon. To be better able to fight these crises, we need to develop a broader understanding of security and invest preventively in human security. Climate action and environmental protection play a central role in this. If we want to prevent further disasters, destabilization and crises, we must, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, despite war, take even faster action on climate protection in order to prevent global warming from exceeding 1.5 degrees Celsius. The energy sector has a, has a key role to play in this. It accounts for more than two-thirds of greenhouse gas emissions worldwide. And global energy demand is growing continuously. By 2040, global demand could increase by one third. Development and emerging countries in particular need increasingly more energy to promote economic growth, to create jobs, to foster social participation and reduce poverty. We urgently need to make the green energy and climate transition even faster and drive it forward more consistently worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, the industrialized countries have an important role to play here. They are the ones that are most responsible for climate change, so it is the responsibility of these countries to lead the way with ambitious climate protection goals and measures. And we must support the countries of the global south, which are most affected by the consequences of climate change, and help them on the path towards green and sustainable development and in their efforts to switch to renewable energy systems that meets their, meet their needs. This is important because the seventh sustainability development goal also applies to them. They too have the right to affordable, reliable and sustainable energy. The potential of renewables for developing and emerging countries is huge. Many of these countries have very good conditions for the use of solar energy, hydropower or wind power. The use of green energy sources improves their energy supply and boosts their economies. It also strengthens their independence and energy supply security. This is because decentralized energy production, for example from hydropower plants or solar grids, reduces dependence on imports and central grids. Disadvantaged rural regions that still have no adequate access to electricity particularly benefit from this. Renewable energies are powerful drivers of development that enable developing countries to leapfrog stages of development. In other words, they help poorer countries to avoid a carbon lock-in, which means dependence on bridging energies such as gas. Instead, renewables help them to put their energy supply on a secure and climate-friendly basis right from the start. This will benefit all. The green energy transition promotes sustainable and robust development in, these, in the respective countries and at the same time advances global climate action. 
Of course, considerable investments are needed to realize this potential, but such investments make good sense and will pay off because it is much more effective and less expensive to minimize climate risk from the outset than to repair damage later on. Combating climate change is one of the most important priorities of the German federal government. Germany is firmly committed to the Paris Climate Goals and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and strongly promotes an ambitious energy transition in Germany, Europe and worldwide. The Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development supports developing and emerging countries around the globe in decarbonizing their energy sector and embarking on that path toward sustainable, climate-friendly development. At present, this is more urgent than ever. The Russian attack on Ukraine has led to rising energy prices. This will particularly felt in developing countries that rely on energy imports and are not in a position to alleviate the negative consequences of price increases. A key focus of our efforts is on our climate and development partnerships. Here we work closely with partner countries committed to climate policy to support them in transforming their systems to achieve climate neutrality, climate resilience and sustainability. This month I signed such a partnership with Rwanda, which is a pioneer for climate action in Africa. Our ministry will support Rwanda in delivering on its ambitious NDCs and help Rwanda in adapting better to climate change and in driving forward sustainable urban development. The partnership also serves to strengthen the dialogue on climate policy as well as foster cooperation with the scientific community, the private sector and civil society. And we plan further partnerships in the future. We have been working closely with the North African countries in the field of energy transition for several decades. This is because they have ideal conditions for renewable energy as well as the production, use and even export of green hydrogen. This could also drive the decarbonization of sectors that are difficult to electrify. In addition, we rely on cooperation with ambitious emerges, emerging countries, which as major emitters play an important role in achieving the 1.5 degree target because they have strong influence in the region and can therefore act as catalysts for global climate action. For me, however, energy transition does not merely mean a technical transformation of the energy sector. For me, it is much more a socio-economic transformation. The energy transition must be socially acceptable. For this to happen, all the people affected must be included and benefit from the associated structural change. At this point, allow me to stress the guiding principle of the 2030 agenda of leaving no one behind. I therefore work to ensure that the transformation is fair, in other words, a just transition. As is the case with every change in society as a whole, there are of course also people for whom the energy transition comes with losses and disadvantages. For example, people working in carbon intensive industries who lose their jobs. It is important to create new prospects for these people and their families. This means creating new employment opportunities, providing training and skills development programs and developing social protection and safety nets. This is all part of Germany's development cooperation and we will actively address this, these issues with our partners. At multilateral level too, the German government is focusing on building effective alliances to accelerate the global energy and tra climate transition. For example, during its G7 presidency this year, the German government will focus on the topic of just energy transition and expand partnerships in this field. And in this way, we want to mobilize additional funds for the energy transition, also with the help of the private sector and the multilateral development banks. The Just Energy Transition Partnership with South Africa, which Germany presented together with the UK, the US, France and the EU at the 2021 Climate Conference in Glasgow, is a good example here. Under this partnership, South Africa has committed to overcoming its coal dependency and to cutting 1.5 gigatons of emissions over the next 20 years. Given South Africa's role as an electricity supplier in the region, the partnership also has an impact that goes beyond the country's borders. Let me thank our British partners and Minister Quateng, who coordinated the actions toward building this partnership. 
As we seek to further development the Just Energy Transition Partnerships, the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development will work closely with the Federal Foreign Office, the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and the Federal Ministry for the Environment. We want to build on the successes of the Glasgow Climate Conference and the infrastructure partnership initiated there by the UK. And at the next UN Climate Change Conference in Egypt, my ministry, together with Jennifer Morgan, the Special Envoy for International Climate Policy at the Federal Foreign Office, will push for more ambitious national targets and a faster transition to renewable energy. Ladies and gentlemen, the global energy transition is the challenge of the 21st century. It is not a luxury and it's not a burden, but an investment in the future. A future that offers greater prosperity, better participation and a higher quality of life. The global energy transition holds a unique opportunity for sustainability, resilience, sovereignty and peace. The federal government is determined to make the most of it. Thank you.